So Gabriel here was just asking about uh, some of the rare and, and threatened species here in the salt marsh. And so this guy is a light-footed clapper rail. And this is sort of a, a classic species here in our Southern California marshes. So as we look over here out in the salt marsh, what we see is mostly a pickleweed. So this is a relatively, um, you know, low, low elevation. So the pickleweed right now, if I were to walk out there, it'd be up to my ankles. Maybe the deepest stuff might be up to my knees or so. So relatively small. Clapper rails utilize um, another uh, common type of um, wetland dominant lower marsh um, uh, species that we don't really have so much so much here. A grass, a grass that grows much more like this is not this isn't it, but this is this is giant wild rye, but grows much more like this, so much more up and down type of vegetation. Um, now, uh, so, so what the clapper rails do, the clapper rails live out in the marsh and they will form their nests. They'll build their nests around some of these main stems of, of these plants. And uh, they do it in such a way that when the tide comes up, so they build it in the main wet parts, the lower parts of the marsh, as the tide comes in, their nest floats up. With, as the tide goes up, so so it's really cool. So so the nest, so the chicks, the eggs, they just you know they're cool. They just float up and down. What the what the birds will do is take the the upper part of the vegetation and bend them over, and so in effect make a bit of a tent, so that that nest can't ever completely float away. Um, which is great, super fantastic behavior, very cool adaptation to this ecosystem. The benefit of being in the salt marsh for them is they're away from predators, right? They're not on the, in the terrestrial area like this where cats and other things can get at them more easily. So they're out there far away from their terrestrial threats. The problem is, as we've been losing a lot of our, well, two things, we've been losing our vegetation, one. Two, as sea level rise is coming in, and we've not allowed our salt marshes to migrate a little bit inland as they naturally want to do, right? Um, what that means is as we have higher, as we have more, more coastal flooding, those nests here, if the veg, two things, if the vegetation isn't tall enough, the, the nest is gonna pop off and float away, right? And so, and so the babies will, will die. <clears throat> um, uh, what else we have? Okay, uh, we, what we also noticed in some of our, the classic story comes out of San Diego. Down there, what happened was um, in doing some of the restoration, the vegetation we put in was there, but wasn't super robust. So instead of being, and I should have said that the genus of this plant is called Spartina, of this native salt marsh grass. Again, not this, but if we were to have it, it would be down here in the salt marsh. Um, uh, we would get Spartina to grow, but it would be stunted because we used substandard soils and not really great soil. So what would happen is you get some of the Spartina, some of the salt grass starting to grow and the uh, birds would come in, the clapper rails would come in and nest, but instead of being a tall shoot or, or you know, very robust plants, they were a little stubby and short. And so when the, if the birds would build their nest, they wouldn't be high enough to survive regular high tides or regular spring tides. And so that was problematic. Um, and so, so you could have failed function because the area is getting flooded more. You could have, uh, and so then the birds wouldn't be there. You could have uh, a not well-designed restoration so that you don't get the full robust plant productivity and structure that we wanted. That could lead to failure. Um, we could have too much inundation, too much flooding because of sea level rise, et cetera, which might make that site uh, not support these clapper rails. All these things, in addition to just outright habitat destruction and outright um, uh, de harming of the birds themselves, all that has led to the clapper rails becoming an endangered species. And because they're an endangered species and because their habitat, um, because they need salt marsh habitat to complete their life cycle, um, one of the key drivers of, of many salt marsh projects here on the west coast is does it create habit, can it create habitat for light-footed clapper rails? So again, light-footed clapper rails is a signature species of some of the challenges that we face in our salt marshes and one of the key factors that people oftentimes will build into a restoration design in a Southern California salt marsh restoration.